probably categorise the skills challenge at the moment into sort of three main areas. I think uh, the first is is the sort of paradox we have in Ireland at the moment, where we have just over 12% of people unemployed. Many of those people are university educated, uh, well educated people uh, who have strong skill sets. And on the other side, we have key skill shortages in a number of areas in technology and science. So we have a real paradox where we have availability of talent and yet they don't have the skills to take on the, the, the roles that are available. And I think we have a sort of a short term uh, issue there where we have to try and and reskill and retool people as quickly as possible. But also we need to understand that this is not a problem just for government, that, that this is actually uh, as big a problem and an issue uh, for employers. And I think the challenge for employers is to see themselves not, ju ju not just as consumers of talent, but actually as developers of talent. And therefore, they need to have talent strategies in their own organizations, which develops people on, which then can create opportunities at the lower end for those people who are well-educated, third-level educated, to sort of take lower roles who can help themselves reskill and really sort of create a sort of a talent flow through organization. Because as I said, that's something we can do quickly and in the short term, um, because the issue we st still have is this 12% unemployment, and yet we have these skill shortages. And the other implication of that is that many very talented, well-educated people have gone overseas um, and the challenge for us now is, you know, as soon as we can and as soon as the employment situation changes and the economy continues to pick up, is attracting those people back in by very clearly demonstrating that there is opportunity and that there are more uh, places available than, than when they left. I think we desperately need a national talent strategy. <clears throat> a report that we commissioned in 2012 uh, where we went out and spoke to employers, we sp went out and spoke to people, unemployed people, we went and spoke to the universities, we you know involved a lot of people. It was very clear from that work that, and, and we see it even in, in our own business, where there are lots of activities going on. The universities are very focused on, on engaging with business and understanding what are the skills required. The Department of Education, the Department of Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation, the Higher Education Authority, American Chamber of Commerce, IBEC, IDA, and we've been involved with lots of these organizations talking about talent and talking about the skills gap and the needs and all that sort of stuff. So there is a huge amount of great work going on across all of these organizations. The challenge we have is that it's not coordinated, it's not integrated, and therefore we're missing a trick. And the trick is that Ireland's advantage is its size. We are a small country. We could coordinate all of these organizations. We could get the right government focus, the right input from business, and the right alignment from both third level and 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 undergrad and, and secondary school education to get it all aligned around a national talent strategy so that we weren't replicating initiatives all over the place but we had a very clear view and something that was integrated and that's what I mean by a national talent strategy and I think we desperately need to put that in place because I think at the moment, as I said, there's a lot of goodwill. Everybody recognizes the problem. Everybody wants to fix the problem, but it's completely dispersed. And I think there's a huge amount of wasted effort going on because there's so many overlaps and there's a lack of a real cohesiveness, uh, which I think has to happen. One of the lessons that we have from the past is, you know, in the mid to late 80s, uh, Ireland did develop a national plan uh, bringing together government policy, third level education and business and that was around create that Ireland would become a technology, pharmaceutical and biomedical hub for Europe. Uh, that was a very very clear plan, it was a statement of intent um, and there was great coordination across those three parts uh, you know, of the country where we had government uh, creating the policy creating the incentives, we had the universities creating the third level courses to produce the skills and we had business effectively saying that if you produce these graduates we will employ them. That was hugely successful and if you look at Ireland today in 2014, you know, the scale of our technology, pharmaceutical and biomedical industry is, 
you know, outstanding. There's over you know, 120,000 people employed in those industries today in Ireland. That's just a great example of where historic, you know, we have done this in the past. It's not something that is, is totally new to us. And what we need now, as I said, as we've moved from the crisis management post bailout, we need now an integrated plan, which is a similar sort of a focus and say, what do we want Ireland to be? you know, in 2019 and over the next four or five years that we create the sort of dynamic and integration that delivers on that sort of plan. I think the whole digital sector has now, I mean, has now just exploded in terms of the amount of activity and the amount of focus there is um, and the, the impact it's having on just people's lives, the, the impact it's having on industry in terms of new business models, it, the impact it's having on the consumer in terms of their ability to, to choose, to select, to compare uh, and to purchase you know, in a way that, that wasn't possible before. So I think for, from a digital, there's absolutely, I think the whole food area is very important. I mean, the decision by Kerry Group to set up its food innovation center here in Ireland for a global company like that, I think, again, that's another very important area uh, for the future. So they're absolutely the sort of uh, areas that we should focus on and, 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 there, and, and really understand the skills that we require around that. because. You know, you, you heard said that, you know, a lot of the time you, we're, not, we're trying to think about how we should educate our students for jobs that haven't even been created yet. Uh, and we're moving, you know, more and more into, into, into a scenario where people will have a sort of a, a portfolio of skills in order to do their job, that it's not going to be a one size fits all, that people's being agile and flexible being analytical and being creative will be all part of the job that they do and therefore making sure that you know the, the sort of the the courses that they're doing and the skills that they're developing give them that sort of flexibility is very important because we live in an uncertain world and the future is going to be even more not, not quite uncertain but more less predictable and therefore we need flexibility uh, in the skills that we produce.